Hello and welcome into Talk of the Town here on CW57. A lot of ground to cover this morning. My name is Rich Reynolds. I'm here with Vicki McCarthy uh, from Madison Community Montessori Schools and welcome on Hi, in. Thanks so much. Yeah, always like having you in. It's my first time to get to chat with you. I was I was in the background the last time when, right. when Janet was talking with you, but uh, I love talking about education. My wife is an educator, oh, so nice. um, always an interesting topic for me. Uh, for, for the families that are interested, I guess, in Montessori for their children, we're going to cover some ground, especially uh, for toddlers. How right. early can they get going? Yeah, they can start at, at our school at 12 months, so long as they're a steady walker. And a steady walker generally means they've had practice for about two months, being in that position upright and moving. And, you know, they can actually carry something when they're walking then as okay. well. And so then they stay in the toddler program until they're about two and a half or three, and then they'll move into our preschool program, and we go all the way through eighth grade, so they can stay that whole time with us. Oh, wow. Okay. So mm -hmm. now if I was to bring a toddler in, what's the schedule look like for my kids? Sure, kid? sure. We have a school year schedule, so we start in September, and we get, or go through June. Um, it is a Monday through Friday schedule, which means families are there all five days, but there's a half day option and then a full day option as well. Okay, so now what does a, a classroom look like for a toddler? Mm -hmm. There are a couple of different areas in the, in the toddler community. Um, there's a practical life area, which is where they do things where, um, like they're learning how to take care of themselves, they're learning how to take care of the environment, and they're doing food preparation. So I brought okay. a dressing frame here just to give um, an example of the zipper dressing frame. A child will learn how to zip, and then obviously that'll transfer to being able to zip up their own jacket. Um, I talked about food preparation, so they make their own snack in the toddler program. Oh, really? Okay. Somebody bakes muffins and for the whole class, and then they share that at snack time. And then this middle um, lesson there is a table wiping lesson, so they also wipe up after themselves when they're finished eating. We have a small broom, a small um, mop, so they take care of the environment in that way as well. Okay. So a lot of hands-on stuff, I guess, Absolutely. for the toddlers, right. right? Yeah. Right. So um, all these activities, I mean, really, you know, are working towards a child's sense of independence, which Absolutely. I think is, is very cool. Um, what else is in the environment sure. that they work with? The next largest area is the language area. And that's obviously because a child at this age is just, you know, their vocabulary is exploding. And so we'll have a lot of the language matching cards where a child will be introduced to new vocabulary. Um, a bookshelf filled with beautiful new books that rotate on a regular basis. They'll be singing often. Um, the teacher's doing a lot of, uh, having a lot of conversations with the children so that they're really learning how to, how to dialogue with somebody else in the environment. And then, of course, we have the manipulative section, which is um, where the children will be focusing on their eye-hand coordination and the refinement of their hand movements, and then okay. music and art as well. Wow, okay, so very mm -hmm. all-encompassing. That's right. I, I like that. Um, you know, what stands out or, or surprises people the most when they actually see the program? Yeah, I think you kind of hit it, the nail on the head when you mentioned independence earlier. Yeah. People are completely surprised to see how independent um, children at this age can be. And it's amazing what they can do when we, the adults, step aside and allow them the opportunity to do it and provide them the right size objects in their environment in order to do the, the task. Um, so I think independence definitely, and then toilet training um, is something that we do at this young age, and um, it's that pretty, early, like at, yeah. at 12 months. Yeah, they okay. start pretty early, and so that's also something I think that's most shocking for families when they come through and say and they see it in action. For everyone who's a parent, that's such a glorious day when the kids <laughs> finally potty train. You know, <laughs> that's right. It's right. And, you're, and you're on to the whole diaper thing. Yeah, it's 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 a wonderful, wonderful day. So, yeah, if, if you're a family, you got toddlers, you're interested in doing a program like this. How can people find out more, Vicky? Well, they can certainly come and check out the website, and there are a lot of really great links on our school's website to learn more about the Montessori philosophy. But personally, I just think that seeing is believing, and I feel like people have to come in and see this in action. And so we typically invite guests to come on Thursday mornings, so you can come on over and have a visit on a Thursday morning. But we also have one last open house coming up in March for this for next fall, so um, it, it would be a great time for people to come on by. So a lot of ways to check it out. I think it's uh, it's actually really, really fascinating. Um, you know, tell us a little bit more then. So from, from the toddler stage, what's the next stage that they end up going right. into and how does the program change a little bit? Sure. Well, then they go into our preschool program, which is designed for three to six year olds. From there, we move into a six to nine year old program, which is really our first, second, third grade. Okay. And then they would move into an upper elementary program, which is fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then they can finish up in our adolescent program, which is for seventh and eighth graders. Yeah, you said all the way up through eighth all grade. The way through. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting. Check them out. Vicki is here from Madison Community Montessori School. We got a lot more as we move along here on Talk of the Town on CW57. And we are back on Talk of the Town. And for this segment, I'm going to try and 
sit up really straight, keep both of my feet on the ground, be in alignment because we're talking about chiropractic care, which is one of my favorite topics and something that has helped me even throughout my life as we are bringing in Dr. Jeff Aberly from Aberly Chiropractic. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. You know, um, a lot of people complain, especially I, I, I think even more in the winter, but you know, throughout the year you'll have people complaining about my muscles are tight, I feel tight, I feel a general soreness, if you will. Um, why do our muscles get so tight? This is, it's, it's the chicken or the egg scenario. People will say, well, it's my muscles that are tight that are pulling the bones out. And other people say, well, it's my bones that are out that are making the muscle tight. What it is, it's actually the bones of the problem. And the simplest analogy is this. If you take a whole bunch of kids' building blocks and you just stack them up, one on top of one another, and if everything is perfectly aligned, you can compress that with a lot of force. I mean, if you added maybe 10 times the force of gravity, you could probably actually burst one of the blocks. But now if you take that same stack and you now start skewing the different blocks that are there, if you start compressing it, very quickly that thing is just going to buckle up from underneath you, okay? But if you take that same stack of skewed blocks and now you tip the whole thing so it's a leaning tower, you know, like the leaning tower of Pisa, well, the thing is just going to fall just with gravity, right? But on our spines, we actually have muscles that can help hold that crooked stack up. And that's where the muscle tightness comes from. It's, it's the, that our bodies are twisted and the, the bones are not aligned properly in the body. And so muscles hold us up. And it's actually doing us a great service. The tight muscles that we have are actually holding us up. Okay. So we don't want to actually try to loosen that through direct manipulation type means. We want to actually change the structure and then the muscles will loosen up on their own. It's, it's fascinating. So it's actually that way, not the muscles tightening up, pulling the bones out. Well, say I'm, I'm misaligned. Why not go see an MD? Why do I need chiropractic care? Well, MDs don't typically deal with that stuff. Um, you'll have, you have a profession called um, osteopathy, and those are medical doctors that will also do some manipulation as well. But typically, it's the chiropractic profession that deals strictly with bony alignment, and they deal specifically with these headaches that are caused from bony malpositions. Uh, physical therapists, too, do, um, some of them do bony manipulation as well, but it's primarily the chiropractic profession that handles that. I know people that uh, have a lot of chronic pain issues as well. Uh, is chiropractic something that can treat chronic pain? Yeah, it's... If, if the chronic pain is due to something bad, like you know, something medical, like cancer, or some, some other medical, clearly a medical condition, then chiropractic is probably not going to touch and help that. But if it's due to like chronic headaches, and especially if no one can find a reason for it, um, if it's low back pain, chronic low back pain, you believe the people that are on disability just due to low back pain. And yes, as you unwind their bodies, all that stuff can disappear. Now, it's not always quick, but it's slow. As, and as you unwind their bodies, all that stuff goes away. As you're realigning the structure, the muscles don't have to hold you up as much, and you get better. You know, a topic that uh, we talk about sometimes, uh, or I have with people, something called brain fog, anxiety. Uh, I think my brain fog usually goes away after a cup of coffee. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is brain fog and anxiety? How does chiropractic care treat that? Brain fog is just a kind of a generic name for feeling out of it. And, and you're, what you're talking about is just kind of morning waking up thing. Right. So coffee can help that. <laughs> brain fog, coffee does not help with. If it helps, maybe just a touch. But it's this feeling out of it. Um, I describe it to people as they, it's like, do you feel like you have a veil over your existence? And people will go, yeah. Or they feel they, they can't formulate sentences real quickly. They have to think really hard about everything they're going to say. And everything they do is kind of a chore. That's brain fog. And that is due to the, the you got to understand, the spinal cord, your lifeline, the spinal cord itself, goes through the spinal column. And as these bones get out of position and as things get twisted up and distorted, it distorts the, brain, uh, the um, spinal cord. And then it can distort the brain stem, which controls all your natural functions, uh, all your automatic functions. And it will make you feel out of it. And they just sometimes one or two treatments, and that can go away. It's really, really fun. Another topic that uh, I come across a lot now that I'm getting more gray hair is old age, and, and you see old, with old age slumping a lot of times. Yeah. Can that be prevented? Yes, it can. But once you're there, I mean, if you're you know, seven years old, there's no, you know, and you're really bent over, the chances of me getting you to pop up like a 40-year-old are pretty slim again. But it's a preventable thing. And what it is is, is as, you, as the body, as, over the life, as you get bones to shove forward, there is no muscles to pull them back. It is the one thing you need chiropractors for is the forward position of bones. And that's what makes us slumpy. And people always equate it to age, but as you age, as time goes on, you get more and more of these bones knocked out of place. That's really what's going on. Check it out. It's, I'm a big believer of chiropractic care. Dr. Jeff Aberly with us from Aberly Chiropractic over on East Broadway. Doc, thanks for stopping in. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town coming up next on CW57. And we are back on Talk of the Town, and we are talking about things that I like to talk about, things with microphones and 
and potting up things and channels and all that kind of stuff and uh, recording because that's part of the industry that I'm in. It's also the part of the interest or part of the industry that this guest is in as well as Buzz Kemper joins us from Audio for the Arts. Welcome on in. Well, thank you very much, Rich. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. You know, studios come and go all the time in Madison. AFA now has been around for 20 years. What what do you attribute the staying power to AFA? You know, A, I think my, it's because my, my business partner and I have managed to not strangle each other. <laughs> and uh, no, I think it's, it's largely um, diversity. We do uh, a lot of different kinds of music and we do audio for business. And we do both in studio and on location. And that helps a lot of our clients. You know, when we work with a symphony orchestra, a 60, 70 piece orchestra, they're not going to fit in our studio. It's about the size of yours here, actually. And uh, so what we do is if we're working with the Madison Symphony, we'll work with them at Overture Hall. Okay. If we're working with the uh, Wisconsin Philharmonic, we work with them in the hall that they that they normally play in, uh, in, in Brookfield, and so on and so forth. So we can handle a number of different uh, music styles, audio for business, and we can either have the client come to us or we can go to them. And it's been a great formula. So you talk about 20 years and 20 years, you know, can come and go like that. How has the crazy. recording industry kind of evolved, you know, for you and how have you evolved over the last 20 years? That's a great question. I mean, the the technology I won't even get into because it's so easy to get deep into the weeds on that. But the technology, let me just suffice to say that the technology has changed radically. Um, you know, I started out uh, manually cutting uh, uh, analog tape with a razor blade, and uh, you know now of I course, remember those days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now of course we're in the we're in the virtual world, so that's all changed. But in terms of just the uh, the way that the industry works, the uh, you know we no longer have the big you know, mega studios that uh, that do really big, high-end, high-dollar kind of thing. I shouldn't say we don't, but we have much fewer of, of those. And uh, Smart Studios, for instance, which was the, the top-of-the-line rock and roll studio in Madison for many years, um, eventually went out of business because those kinds of jobs sort of dried up. So I think that th what you have to do nowadays to be in business as a studio is just be very diversified, put a lot of emphasis on customer service, make sure that every customer feels like you're adding enough value to their product that they are going to go to you instead of going to their friend who has a studio in their basement because I guarantee you and I and everybody we know knows at least one person who has a studio in their basement. Right. <laughs> and so they have to have a reason to want to come to us, and we provide that reason with quality and customer service. And, and you also mentioned a word, uh, diversification. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you had mentioned the Wisconsin Philharmonic, the Madison Symphony Orchestra. Do you just specialize in that, or when you talk diversification, do you do all kinds of music? We do all kinds of music, yeah. And uh, the symphony stuff I mentioned because it is kind of an oddity. Very few uh, audio people will work with a full symphony orchestra or a full uh, choral group, and we have several of them with whom we work, and we love that. But we do jazz, we do rock. When Smart Studios, which I mentioned earlier, when they closed down, their lead engineer came to us, and he is just a top-notch uh, recording uh, engineer for rock music. Um, he, re he fairly recently did uh, an album at my studio with the guitarist who played with Genesis for many years. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, so we have, you know, he has those kinds of clients and, and uh, so, so we do, and we do audio for business as well. So basically our formula is if we think we can do an excellent job for you, we'll take the job. If we don't think we can do an excellent job for you, we'll recommend one of our competitors who we know will take care of you. You know, 20 years, I'm sure there's a lot of stories. In about 20 seconds, can you give us a good story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there, of course, you know, there are, there are just, uh, just a million of them. But there was one time when my business partner and I were doing sound for the Dalai Lama. And, uh, and I, uh, the State Department was there to protect him. And, uh, and I went over to the State Department guy and I said, uh, I, his name was Michael. I said, Michael, I just want you to know that I'm, and he goes, I know. And I said, okay, I need to run out there and adjust a mic. He said, I know. And I started to say, and that's my business, but he said, I know. And uh, I finally said, I laughed and I said, Michael, you know what I had for breakfast this morning, don't you? And he didn't crack a smile, he just said, 
Pretty much. <laughs> Love so it. So we were, we were vetted by the State Department and we passed, so that was great. <laughs> Check him out, Audio for the Arts. It's Buzz Kemper who joins us here on Talk of the Town. Thanks for joining us, Buzz. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Talk of the Town here on CW57. And we are back on Talk of the Town. Welcome back in as we got Dr. Pat with us. Patrick Anderson from Madison Maximize Living is joining us here on the program to talk a little more chiropractic care. How are you doing today, Doc? Oh, I'm doing great, Rich. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, nice to have you. As uh, I want to learn a little bit about Maximize Living. So, so specifically, what is that? Well, we're a group of about 400 clinics throughout the United States. Uh, and we uh, are in, uh, work with chiropractors, and uh, we treat a uh, number of athletes. We're the official chiropractors for USA Wrestling, USA Martial Arts, USA uh, Weightlifting, and USA Track and Field. So oh, we're okay. sending a number of chiropractors to the Olympics this year to uh, take care of those athletes and enhance their performance. I, I could see where with athletics, especially like contact sports like martial arts and wrestling, there could be a number of misalignments. Huh? Exactly. It's a constant challenge for the athlete, but it helps them perform better, recover faster, and uh, have less injuries. Okay. And we also have like a top five list that I want to go over, and I kind of feel like I should be like David Letterman and be tossing him or something like that. <laughs> where's, where, where's Paul? Paul, you over there, Paul? Uh, it, let's, let, let's talk about chiropractic here and the top five reasons to see a chiropractor. Maybe we could take them even in reverse order of whatever you had down. Sure. Okay. So number five, to age well. Okay. How does chiropractic care help us age well? Well, you know, when we, as we age, we lose motion, we lose posture, we lose strength, we lose balance, unless we're doing something to enhance that. So every day we should be doing something to build our health or we're losing our health, it slips away. So by maintaining a strong structure and nervous system, we have better posture, better movement, better balance, better strength to do the challenges we have in life. Okay, number four, and enhancing athletic performance. You were just talking about all the athletes that, yeah. that you treat. How does being in alignment help athletic performance? Well, because you're gonna be able to move your body faster and more a better coordination and much stronger. I've had the opportunity to treat many, many athletes and we do pre and post strength testing and we'll see strength improve in specific muscles right after an adjustment, right after we take interference off of the nerve by adjusting the vertebra. Everybody talks about how expensive health care is. The number three reason to see a chiropractor is to save money on health care. How do you save money by going to a doctor? Well, there's a study done that if you get into a wellness lifestyle and after five years of seeing a chiropractor, your overall health care expenses was 31%. That means you could see your physician and your chiropractor. Your overall health care expense was 31%. You had 85% less prescription use and just the co-pays on prescriptions are expensive these days, as people well know. Um, and 60% less hospitalizations if you're living that wellness lifestyle, taking care of yourself, doing the things that build healthy cells. Wow, sounds good to me. Uh, you know, number two, uh, to live that wellness lifestyle. Yeah, the, the wellness lifestyle, talk about what that means. It's not just chiropractic care. What does that mean, wellness mm -hmm. lifestyle? That's great. Um, the, the adjustments are the first thing because structure determines everything else. Without your brain and nervous system communicating well and having power and movement and strength, nothing else matters. But in addition to that, you need good fuel, good food, real food. People can, with nutrition, it can be very simple. Eat real food or it can be very complex. So starting with that, and then fitness. People spend a lot of time on their fitness, but actually new studies have shown you can condense that down to as short as a 12-minute intense workout hmm. and be done. And then also um, minimizing toxins uh, is kind of a new subject for people, but we are exposed to many things our bodies weren't exposed to 50 years ago. Sure. And then thinking well, uh, goal setting, uh, stress busting, and uh, positive self-talk or the maximized mind is part of those five essentials we call it to really living well. Okay, so eating well. real food wouldn't be like Pop-Tarts and Chips Ahoy. And, no, uh, it okay. doesn't. Uh, you know, <laughs> just see how you feel after you eat that. <laughs> Mac and cheese out of the box, yeah. Okay. And we get kind of addicted to those foods. Yeah. And, you know, they're comfort foods, but once you get away from them, what's fascinating is people never miss it. Right. Once they get, start getting real food into their body, they don't miss the junk. Absolutely, and the number one reason to see a chiropractor, reducing pain. Yeah, um, one in two people, Rich, have chronic pain. They hurt every day. And various, whether it's headaches or neck pain or injuries from a car accident or work injury, one in two people have chronic pain. And what's fascinating is, and unfortunately, one, when you have chronic pain, it shrinks the brain over time. For every year of chronic pain, the brain shrinks about a sugar cube size. Oh, wow. And over time, that really affects your overall brain health. 
I don't have that much brain to give. I don't know a lot of people. <laughs> I know that people do. start <laughs> people start questioning that, but that's a study published in a, in a journal of neuroscience. Wow. Oh boy. A lot, lot of good facts. A lot of good reasons to see a chiropractor. Why not see Dr. Pat over here? Doc, thanks for joining us, and Pleasure. thank you for joining us here on Talk of the Town. It's been my pleasure, and hopefully we'll see you next time on CW57. Thank you.